when you first fell in love about that how, remember how you felt you know walking in the buildings not getting off home, not eating now you know about that in the physical sense now how did you feel when you fell in love with the Lord when you fell feel like shouting? Do you like running around telling somebody I'm in love with the Lord? I don't understand why he loves me so much. I don't understand why he loved me first. But I'm so glad that he loved me. Think about that. He first loved us. It's food for thought. Good morning. And welcome to Ascension Fellowship Church, where we have a good time praising the Lord. For those of you that are watching us virtually, you have to see what I see. We got all our prayer words on these first two rows. Our mothers. Yeah. Yeah. All our mothers. Mother Anderson. <laughs> I knew you were going to shake your head. Mother Huff, Mother Jones, Mother Russell, Mother Walker. These are the elders. See, they were in standing in the breach for us, praying for us. When we was trying to find did I miss somebody? She she I said I said Baker first and she shook her head. Well, I was trying to do alphabetical order. You know, I know how I know how people are. Alphabetical. Anderson, Baker, Huff, Jones, What? That's that's alphabetical. It's everybody, right? I'm just glad we I'm glad we part of season in our lives. So let's give our mothers a hand. Hallelujah. We want to do a little bit on children's moment. Now, I'm going to take it from today's event. Everybody know who Simone Biles is? Yes. She, she has a moment right now. They call it the twisties. And it's not something physical. It's in your mind. And what she's saying is, I'm second-guessing myself. I no longer have confidence. When I go out and try to do those gymnastic things, I second-guess myself, and I don't executed the right way and I don't land the right way so I lose confidence there's a lesson in it for us she needs to know like we need to know we are not alone if we would only call upon the name of Jesus call upon Jesus what a difference it would make and I'm not saying that she's not calling on that but I'm telling us sometimes we think that we're in over our heads Take a moment. 
take a moment. You ain't got to follow your knees to take a moment where you are and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My Bible teaches me that's all you have to say for Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So young people, when you feel like and you don't know where to think, you don't know where to turn to, and you're not comfortable talking to your mama, or you're not comfortable talking to the past, call upon the name of Jesus. And when Jesus answers your prayer, listen and do what you're told in the spirit. Amen? That's our children's moment. Amen. I'd like you to stand for our psalm reading, which comes from the 28th chapter, I'm sorry, the 78th chapter of Psalms. On the 23rd to the 29th verse, you stand as you're able, stand in the spirit. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heaven. And by his power he led out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp, all under their dwellings. And they ate, and they were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the minds you've given us. We thank you for the heart to serve you. We ask, Heavenly Father, that we set aside our worries and set the space aside for your spirit to enter our hearts. May your spirit energize us, refresh us, and revive us. May your spirit leave us in such a way that we're not the same place when we leave this place. May something that is prayed, preached, or sung touch your hearts in a special way. This way, as I bless the Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading comes from Exodus, the 16th chapter. We're going to do verses 2 to 4 and skip to 9 to 15. Starting with the 16th chapter, verse. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then Moses said, then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. Moving over to the ninth verse. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come here before the Lord, for he's heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert. And there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost in the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God.
I don't know if God's made a move in your life that left you speechless. You didn't know what to say. You're so full of it. You had to say you were, thank you, just sold out. Then you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it. I don't know. You know, I don't know if you've had a breakthrough lately. I don't know if God's broken you out of a situation. But he did something that you couldn't explain. Better than you deserve, more than you expected. Sometimes you can just shake your head and say, thank you, Lord. See, there's ministry in the music if we listen to it. Because I know somebody this past week had a miracle happen in their lives. Couldn't explain it, but it was nothing but the working of the Lord. Y'all can sing, no vacancy. His spirit. Come on, sing with him. Your heart's fixed. Your mind's made up. And you say what? Yeah. Amen. Good morning. 
See, it's, it's praise time. It's like when we come to the altar this morning, we got praise on our lips because we serve a mighty good God. As I said at the very beginning of this worship service, he loves us first. And not only did he love us first, he showed how much he loved us by what he does for us. So it's appropriate at this time that we bring our prayer request to the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Um, a dear childhood friend uh, suffered a massive heart attack on Tuesday. In addition, they found a hole in her heart and bone. She passed away sadly. Anyone else with prayer requests? Yeah, Grandma David Wynn. Here I pray, Lord. Everybody. Amen. Which family? Raj. Raj family. Okay. Jesus. Auntie. saying it collectively as a body for each other. Lord, hear our prayers. Because we're praying for each other. We're praying together. We're on one accord. That's something in the name of Jesus. Savior, Savior, Savior. Father, we're grateful that we're clothed in our right mind, that you grace us with the power of our limbs, that we can come before you this morning with humble heart and bowed heads and say, Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you've already done. We thank you for the big ways and the small ways that you continue to show your love for us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, this morning for your patience with us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because we may not have done all the things we could have done, but you bless us to see the light of yet another day. We thank you for this day, Heavenly Father, because it represents yet another opportunity for us to share the good news about you as our Lord and Savior. We ask you, Heavenly Father, just remember all the families that are represented here. Hear the prayers that we have in our heart for our families. Sometimes our families make us cry. Sometimes our families keep us up at night. But we know there's something in your name and we call upon it this morning. Say, Jesus, Jesus, we're bringing it to your altar this morning. We come to you this morning praying confidently because you've shown us over and over again that you will answer our prayer. So we just want to thank you for what you've already done. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. So our heart this morning is full of gratitude because you didn't have to do what you did, but you did it anyhow. Thank you for the blessings in our life. Thank you for the mothers in our presence. Thank you for the season that we now enjoy. Thank you for reminding us that though we may fall down, you lift us up. Help us, Heavenly Father, to remember where we came from. Not because we're all that, but by thy grace. Help us, Heavenly Father, as we represent you to our family, to our friends, and to our neighborhood. That we be patient with them. That we be forgiving with them as you were with us. And if anyone asks us why we live the way we do, we just say, Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus. May we be encouraged to do what you've called us to do. Where we need refreshing this morning, we ask that you refresh our spirits. Help us, Heavenly Father, to never grow weary of doing good. For our Bible tells us in due season, we too shall reap. In the meantime, Heavenly Father, we keep on keeping on living up to the calling of being called Christians. Bless the hearts of all those present. This way, as now bless the Son, Jesus' name. Amen. I ask you to stand as you're able or stand in the spirit for a gospel reading. Which comes from the gospel of John, the sixth chapter. It's going to start with the 24th verse and go on to the 35th verse. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. Mm -hmm. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, mm -hmm but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that secures eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has praised his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do the works of God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Mm -hmm. So they asked him, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? Mm -hmm. What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
your hand up. Amen. Amen. They, they, they have convinced you that Jesus is excellent. So we're going to start on one accord. Amen. We have come to honor and praise an excellent God. Got a lot of things going on in our life. But thanks be to God, we got somebody who can handle our problem. Isn't that right? Amen. Oh, thanks be to God. I want to say to you, good morning. Good morning. I thank God that this is a little bit cooler day than the past weeks. Amen. So I want y'all to relax so that we can share the word of God. Break bread with the Holy Communion. And then we will leave not only with our heads up high, but better than when we came here. Amen? Amen. Let me begin with a word of prayer. Excellent God, you who sit high and look low, we come before your presence with all of our problems, but no longer struggling in fear because, because of your love, we have faith. And so strengthen our faith this morning so that we may be able to walk in the newness of life and triumph over our troubles and by the grace of your Holy Ghost, be able to take someone's hand who was lost and to help them to be found. Bless us now in the name of Jesus, our excellent God, we pray. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, in John 6, the 35th verse, you will find there the following. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I think that's very interesting, especially to us nowadays. It is from this text that I like to use as a theme this morning. Give us this bread. Give us this bread. Now, one could not share this text with you without giving you some background of how they got to this point that I think is very relevant. And if you open your Bibles to John 6, you will understand something. That prior to this statement, Jesus had fed 5,000 men. It was more folk than that because the women and the children were not counted. Some theologians even suggest not only were the women and the children not counted, but servants were not counted. So imagine you have all these hungry folk begging for food. The Bible tells us that in the midst of all this hunger, that one little lad obeyed his mother that morning and he took along his happy meal. Is that right? And in his happy meal, all he had was a couple of fish and a couple of barley loaves. And it is interesting to me that amongst all those folk, no one said that youthful phrase, I don't want that. You see, hunger has a way of getting in your gut. 
And when you get it in your gut, you don't refuse sardines and crackers. Is that right? All of a sudden, the things you wouldn't eat, all of a sudden, your stomach growls and, and you say, we hungry. And it is my belief that at the end of this feeding, every now and then when you help somebody, they lift you up a little bit. Isn't that right? Yes, yes. And at the end of this feeding, the Bible tells us that all of a sudden, they want to give Jesus an earthly pedestal. The Bible says they wanted to make him king. And the fact of the matter is, Jesus already knew who he was. And he didn't need an earthly kingdom, so the Bible says that he said, these folk ain't right. <laughs> and, and, and so he leaves them and goes across to the other side. And I'm just wondering today, is there someone here today who believes that maybe Jesus has gone to the other side of their life? I mean, you have had good, you've been fed, and all of a sudden, you just see Jesus wrong. Jesus is not a cash cow. Look at somebody and say, Jesus is not a cash cow. Too many people look at Jesus of what they can get and not what they can give. And, and so Jesus said, you're not ready for me yet. And he goes across the lake and lo and behold, when folk got a good thing, you know what they do? They follow you. Hey Amen. I'm talking to some men here right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you following some woman because you didn't let her go, and now you following her. And, and there's some vice versa. Hey Amen. You didn't let somebody go, and you begin to wish I had that for real now. And so those folk, they don't let distance get in the way. They don't talk about the heat. Amen. They don't talk about what time it is. Somehow or another, in their spirit, they said, I got to get there. I got to get myself to where Jesus is. Oh, I wish it was like that every Sunday morning in somebody's spirit. Mm -hmm. I wish we would have that Michael Jackson moment and say, I got to be there. And we would pick up our left foot and our right foot and we would make our arms move. If we got to row the boat somehow or another, we would get there because in our spirit we are saying, oh, Lord, give us this bread. So Jesus makes that significant statement because out of their bellies, their mind get mixed up with the temporal and not the eternal. Their mind get mixed up with the earthly and not the spiritual. And Jesus tells them, you are not ready for what I'm desiring to give you the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And this statement is significant because Jesus is intimately telling those who are seeking a need that to get your need taken care of, there needs to be an intimate relationship. Every now and then, you get a little blessing on the outskirts. But we ain't here for outskirt blessings. Amen. Is that right? I don't know about you, but I'm looking for something that's going to last. Amen. I done had cheap bites and, and saw them tear up. And every now and then, I saw my buddy with a swing, and I long for something that'll last. We've got to stop living in the now and start looking for what's beyond the now. 
And as when our gut moves us there, we begin to see the universality of the bread of life that God gives us. It is interesting to me that bread is universal. So if you parlez-vous francais, you need bread. If you speak ebonically, you need cornbread. <laughs> All of us need bread. And what is interesting is that every country of the world has some form of bread, and bread is associated with life, health, nourishment, and prosperity. It's interesting to me that as we do the research on how they came to this agreement that this is what bread gives us. I very rarely hear prosperity preachers talking about the bread of life. When they talk about bread, they talk about ends and, and Benjamins. Can I get a witness? Somebody here right now, that they're not thinking about God. They think about what God can put in their pockets, some greenbacks. And so when we say, give us this bread, we say, God, I will do what you ask me if you pat my hand. And you know what? Human beings don't want high fives. Isn't that right? They want payment. Can't get folk to serve no more. Amen. Everybody want payment. No one often serves today without financial uh, payment coming back to them. That's why when you see business meetings, folk don't argue about us sharing the word. Amen. They argue about where the money go. Can I get a witness? Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Do I have somebody who don't have a church home? You can say amen, preacher. Amen. If you don't have a church home, you know it. Amen. So when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, Jesus is speaking exclusively. No one else can make that claim. Not President Trump, not President Biden, not even President Obama. And one of the things you're going to learn this world is that no matter how much bread they break off from Washington, it still will not be enough to suit your needs. And you remain this day saying to government, give me some of that bread. And so if we understand this, we must first come to the understanding that when God people say give us this bread they need to understand in order to have the bread of life this bread is special because this bread had to be prepared amen look at somebody say i ain't gonna eat anything amen amen you want your stuff prepared amen amen i remember a time we used to have all these soul food places up and down and folk would always argue about who got the best. And they would tell me who cooked it right and who cooked it too long and who could, all this argument. And I just asked them one question. Did you eat it? <laughs> I think that's relevant to churches today. Stop crying over churches. The question is, did you eat it? Because if you ate it, apparently you said, give us this bread. And the Bible says that the source of the bread of life, when we talk about it being prepared, the ultimate question is, where did it come from? You ever put something in your mouth that you didn't know where it came from? 
Now, I know you didn't. You always say, who gave you this? Mm -hmm. Where you get this from? I got a funny habit. And my wife always get on me. Amen. I'm going to give her her kudos now. We go out to eat, and she always telling me, take smaller bites. <laughs> she forgets that when we pray before we eat, we said, Lord, give us this prayer. And if he gave it to us, guess what we got to do? Got to eat it. Amen. Amen. When you see a doctor, you say, open your mouth wide. When you get your plate, take smaller bites. Don't make sense. Don't make sense. My mouth is the same width while I'm taking medicine or food. And so when it comes to the bread of life, we understand that the bread has to be prepared that's why the folks said, this is something different. Lord, give us this bread. The, the people had compared the bread to the manna that they had in the wilderness. And oftentimes that's what we do. We compare the bread of life to this bread we get on earth. And the Bible says that that bread was a symbol of what was to come. And every now and then, because we don't stay tuned to the word of God, we mix it all up. Amen. And Jesus was telling them, you don't understand that. In our Psalm 78, 24, which says, Though he had commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven, and he rained down manna upon them to eat, and he had given them of the bread of heaven. We don't understand that this was a symbol of what was to come. And I'm not mad at that because if we're not serious, if we just want our bellies filled, that's what's going to happen. We're going to misconstrue what God is doing. Jesus says in a 32nd verse, I believe, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread of heaven. What they were thinking was not what Jesus was thinking. In fact, they missed it when Jesus said, I am the bread of life. See, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're hungry, you don't know what you're eating, you lose sight. And while some of us may partake of hostess bread and others King Hawaiian bread and others still hooked on Wonder Bread. The only bread that is worth laboring for is Jesus. That's the only bread. Jesus is the bread of life and this is who we praise and this is who we ought to be praying out and saying, Lord Jesus, give us this bread. But when we ask for things, we continue to mess things up. And so in the 21st, 27th verse, Jesus says, labor for the meat which never perishes. No matter how good God has been to us, we still operate on the temporal. Can, can you just look to heaven and acknowledge that God, God, you're right. I'm always operating on the temporal. Mm -hmm. Whether it's my gut, whether it's this bill or this car running, whether it's my love life, I'm just operating on autopilot of temporary. 
We are to labor for the spiritual, for it's eternal. Jesus, as you have read and heard, Jesus corrects the people's thoughts regarding from where the bread of life comes from. Why is this important? Because in your own theological mind, you're going to meet folk who say there is no God. And if you don't acknowledge that Jesus came from heaven, you're going to be messed up. You got to know that there's a God in heaven and Jesus came from him. Jesus is not a prophet. He is the only son of God. And just like the manna came down just that time to feed the bellies, Jesus had come down that day to save the sin-sick humanity. He only came down once. And because he came down once, he was prepared. He was killed. He took on our sins. He was killed. He let men beat him. He was killed. He let folk talk about him. You know how you take that dough and you kill it? Jesus was killed. Folk talked about his mama, talked about his work habits, and surely we get talked about like that. Oh, but thanks be to God. Thanks be to God that he was prepared for it. Yes, he was prepared in that wilderness. And each time the devil tried to break him, he said it was written. On that cross, they told him to cast yourself down. He said, I ain't coming down. I got work to do. You can not only kill me like bread, but you can kill me physically. It is this bread that shows us with all the various types, there's only one bread that is life-giving. Somebody ought to say, give us this bread. Give us this bread. We're tired of laboring for the temporal. We want something eternal, and we got to stop claiming on our ancestors because in the 30th and the 31st verse, the people said, give us a shine, show us a sign. Our fathers and mothers ate manna in the wilderness. What you going to do for us, Jesus? <laughs> Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses Gave you not the bread from heaven, but the Father giveth to you. Now watch this. True bread from heaven. A lot of folk claim they're having bread in their life, but they ain't got the true bread. See, every now and then when we get things mixed up, Jesus got to just throw one word in there to get us back on point. I just like to pause here and ask you, what you eating? When you make sandwiches in your life, what kind of bread you using? Some of us are saying, I'm using whatever mama got in the house. Huh? The fact of the matter is, when you use bread, are you using true bread? True bread comes down from God and his son. And we have to acknowledge that if we're going to say, give us this bread. And it is then that Jesus began to prod and teach. In his teaching, we must believe in order to be saved. All those folk that ate when he did the miracle of the fish and the bread, they ate it. Did they not? They swallowed it and probably digested it. And they still said, well, we got to go get some more. That, that was good. And somebody said, that's the best happy meal we ever had. And so we got to follow him wherever he goes. But if we do that, that means we have to acknowledge who he is. 
I don't know if you have a church home today or if you believe in church, but this is where the rubber hits the road. It is not enough, although I would love for you to, to attend church regularly. These folk attended Jesus regularly, but did not believe. We have to believe who he is. Because it seems when we read the text, Jesus got a little bit irate of him. Amen. If you read the text, you could read it with an attitude. Jesus said, you just came because you got your belly filled. And I can imagine him saying, that don't sound like no son of God to me because God is love. You ought not be talking about my belly. I was hungry. You should have known that if you was God. We need to understand what nourishment is and what it does. We, be, we eat to live and operate, not to fake. And so when Jesus speaks of this, he says, we must understand bread's properties. The properties determine its effectiveness for our overall health and welfare. Amen? So many of us grew up on white bread, and all of a sudden when we got to 80s and 90s, they said, stop eating white bread and eat whole wheat. Amen? Is that right? And so if we can understand that, we can understand what Jesus is talking about the property. They're thinking about the properties of the bread that they make, put in the oven, and ate. And Jesus is talking about a bread that has total different properties. Amen. Next time you get home, look at the label on your bread. And ask yourself, do you know what that is in your bread? It ain't just flour. You got polysorbates and avocado that. Amen. All kind of things you putting in your body. You don't even worry about it. But then you get to church, you want to be ticky tack. <laughs> Amen. Lord have mercy. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Amen. Don't take that long to sing. Don't take that long. You get ticky tack about the ingredients. <laughs> but at home, you just say, give me some of that. Give me this bread. And what Jesus is trying to give us, he said, look. I'm not going to give you anything that's going to harm you. I created you. I'm going to sustain you. You ought to cry out to me because I'm only going to give you what you need. I am the provider. And so it is stated that the ingredients of the bread of life is that he was sent from God the Father, that he always did the Father's will, that he represented the Father, that he teaches what the Father wants us to hear, that he teaches and his teachings include the fact of his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's the true bread. That's the bread we cry out, Lord, give us this bread. This is the bread that gives eternal life. This is the teaching that we can feast on because we all want to live forever. Amen. Let me give you a sad shot before I get ready to close. The story is told about a young man who was laying in his casket in the church. And while he was laying there and folk were in the pew mourning, somehow the Holy Ghost allowed him to have a flashback. And someone in the back said, did you see that? And someone said, no, I didn't. What did you see? Well, I could have swore he licked his tongue. She 
looked at and said, girl, you crazy. Turned around, did you see that? Now, he said, now I know I ain't crazy. Well, the fact of the matter is that he did it one last time, and he did a long one. And everybody began to wonder. And Lord, the whole, his loving wife, sitting in the front, said, he told me that was going to be his last will and testament. And what he did was said, the bread that God gave me was so good that I can even taste it in my casket. Lord, have mercy. Isn't that something? That when you taste something so good, it stick with you. Kind of like Granny's oatmeal that said, boy, you ain't going to come back here hungry. I'm going to give you something. Talk to me now that stick to your gut. Anybody ever heard that? To stick to your gut. It'll last you the whole day. You get up in the morning, you ain't hungry. You go through the noonday, you ain't hungry. In the midnight hour, they ask you, you hungry. You say no, because the oatmeal then stuck with you. That oatmeal is like the bread of life, and you ought to be crying out, Lord, give us this bread. Give me something that I can hold on to. Give me something that will stick to my guts and my bones. Give me something, Lord. This is our journey. Yes, hell and high water will come. But if we read the word of God, and we eat the bread of life, oh, my Lord, we don't have to go chasing him now because we got it. We don't have to fake because we got faith. We don't have to trouble because we are triumphant. This is the life that God gives us. This is the life that he was trying to get those who were following to understand. I am more than something that will fill your belly. I want to be that that fills your heart. Will you open your mind and not left behind? Claim Jesus for your own and meet him at his eternal throne. Claim the blood and have life. No longer sit in the pew and have strife. This is our testament. This is our journey. This is the will of God that you and I claim the true bread of life and say, Lord, give us this bread. The true bread of life that satisfies our hunger and thirst saying, Lord, give us this bread. The true bread of life, yes, that has us in fellowship with the only begotten Son, Lord, give us this bread. Pray with me, because it is this bread that enables us by God's Holy Spirit to utter in faith, Lord, give us this bread. And so whatever your need is, we open the doors of the church now. And we pray that the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost will move you to utter, Lord, give me this bread. Come into my heart and life. Help me transition from doubt and fear to faith. If there's someone here who needs a church home, we would be very, very welcoming and happy to accept you as you are and help you to grow to that in which you strive to be. If you need prayer, please come and allow us to call on the God that we believe because we too cry out, Lord, give us this bread. Whatever your need may be, please come 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Will you stand as our choir invites you to come? Is there someone in our assembly today who will surrender to a loving God and say, Lord, give us this bread? If you would be kindly seated for a moment, we will finish up our order of worship. I'm going to first of all state that our celebration is given openly. We love you to give. And we're going to have the plates up here and they will be taking a plate in the back. So we don't want you to look and see everybody watching what I'm giving. No, we want you to earnestly give as the spirit leads you knowing that this ministry would not exist without your kind giving. And we need that to continue to share God's word. So if you would give according to what the Lord played on your heart, we would appreciate it. I'm going to do the announcements right quick, and then we will go to the Holy Communion. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to do that for a particular reason. First of all, do we have any guests or visitors that wouldn't be wouldn't mind for us to recognize them. Will you stand and let us know who you are and so that we can really appreciate you being amongst us. Oh yeah? Oh she did she didn't she didn't bust you out, so you might as well state your name. I'm glad you know her. See, I didn't put you on blast like that. But I want to thank you for being here and being gentle. And what are you, whatever you say to her, you say her in the confines of the car on the way home, all right? We, we, we thank you for being here, and God bless you. Is there anyone else who would love to be recognized? Hey, man. Hey, oh, you, you, you made her blush. Hey, man. We thank you for being here, and we hope that something said or done that has um, comforted you some degree that you would love to come back again. God bless you, and thank you. Amen. Well, I, I see the rest of us are family. Amen. Is that all right? Well, I know we have the announcements on your bulletin, but there are a couple things I want to lift up. You have them there. First of all, I want to go to COVID, amen, because I'm struggling. I'm struggling how folk can see where we are and still refuse. I'll just say it like that. But I want you to know that because we are sensitive to the needs of not only ourselves, but humanity, we, we like to be amongst one another. So on August the 5th, we will be having a clinic here that will provide COVID vaccination shots. And that time will be from 10 to 3. Now, if you got some friends who have been stubborn, you need to encourage them because you want to hang around them. Amen. 
folk talking about wearing masks. Get a shot. Amen. The fact of the matter, folk wearing masks anyway. Amen. So get a shot. Uh, we want to also let you know that we are busy trying to change our community with Vacation Bible School. Amen. You see that? That's taking place. And, it, and we want you to come out. We're going to have classes for everybody. Can I say it bonically? Everybody. So young and old, we're going to have classes. All right? And so I want to lift up that. Now, if you would just give us a brief moment to put our heads in the right place, we want you to go in your closet. And in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning with verse 23, we have what is New Testament communion. We're not going to read it all. We're just going to share. One, it says that when we come together, we don't come to just fill our bellies with bread. We come to enjoy the Lord's body that was broken for us. We come to share the wine that represents his blood that was spilled for us. But at the end, it says, before we partake, let a man, a woman, a child examine himself, herself. So in your closet, examine yourself. Go in your closet and say, Lord, I recognize I've not been all that you have wanted to be. I tried, Lord, but I, I just find hard times. So what I need, I need to get right. And so, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Make me right to take of the elements of bread and wine as you commanded of saying, do this in remembrance of me. I trust you, Lord. I love you. And I come because I want you to give me this bread. Bless all who hear, all who understand, and all who will do the will of God. Amen. I'm going to ask our communion stewards to come forth. Reverend Stroh, if you'd be so kind to take the plate for the choir. Okay, if you would hold it there. With hands over our communion, we ask, Lord, will you bless these gifts of bread and wine? Make them be for us the body of Christ broken for us and the blood of Christ shed for us. Energize us, strengthen us, help our hunger and quench our thirst. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The elements will be distributed. We have an open communion. That means if you're another denomination or faith, we welcome you to take because God is who he is and he does not hold back anyone. Please take as the spirit leads you. Reverend Stroh.
come on, y'all. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. open your cup. I want to encourage you to shake it. All right. Amen. We want you to get all the fruit of the vine. And first you're going to take the wafer. And this is the body broken for you. Take it and eat ye all of it. This cup represents the blood. Take it and drink ye all of it. Amen. Now would you stand? Cause we about to leave. give us this bread. I want you to go forth in faith, lift your head up high, and serve the Lord in fullness forever and ever and ever. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen, and you are dismissed. Reverend Marvin G. Spence, Senior Pastor of Ascension Fellowship Church. Recently, the question came across my desk. How can I generously give to your ministry? The answer is simple. We would love for you to give to this ministry in two vehicles. One, you can send through postage through the mail. 
Senate 2, Ascension Fellowship Church, 2429 West Hampton Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53209. You may also utilize Cash App. On the bottom of the screen, these things will be posted, and we will prayerfully consider to ask you to give generously. And as always, continue your spiritual journey because God still cares. God bless you, and we will see you soon.